Mighty and gracious God, we thank you for this spring-like weather tonight. We don't know what Monday's going to hold, but you know what? We're going to enjoy today. Amen. So today we're going to rejoice. We're going to honor you, Father. Tonight we're going to worship you and, and, and just lift your name higher. We're going to exalt your name, O oh God. We're going to magnify your name and just glory in you. Thank you for this opportunity to serve once again. For I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening. We're so excited to be here. We're going to start out with Red Light, Blue Heart. I wonder if we can get the lights. No? Because that? You're kidding me? Oh. I won't be able to see it. <laughs> I'm all about atmosphere. <laughs> so we're going to keep the lights on. Here we go. Red Light, Blue Heart.
vision is really founded in the love of Jesus, knowing that all of us has a future made in hope. And um, we actually are very um, much involved in um, empowering women and children who have been in the commercial sex trade. And so that is um, the one thing that um, we are really focusing on. So what we do is we um, provide work opportunities for them and we provide ways for them to, to get education. And we do that by first um, empowering them through helping them in marketing all the products that um, the women, our women have made. So one of the um, uh, main source of the sustainability that um, we um, do for the women is to really market, to promote the artistry of uh, our women through the jewelries that they have made. And um, aside from that, we also uh, speak to a lot of different conferences and churches and different events so that we can advocate for the women and we can tell about their stories. Our mission is already fulfilled when we see our women you know, choosing to love and to really give themselves up to the do the work of making the gospel really evident and clear in their lives. Let's give a warm welcome to Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. That's good evening in my native language, Filipino. And thank you so much for allowing me to be here a little bit to share my uh, story and to share the ministry that we have in the Philippines. And I know that if you look at those statistics, it's really overwhelming, right? Right? And, and you feel like, well, I'm in this part of the world. What can I do about these things? And sometimes, you know, even me, you know, I work in this ministry and I work with um, all these women. And sometimes when I go out of, you know, the neighborhood where I come from, I see women as early as 5 a.m., 6 a.m. already prostituting themselves, you know, in the streets of Manila because I live about two blocks away from where they are. And it's so heartbreaking to see that. But what I realize is that when we try to reach out to others, when we try to see what God really wants for them, you know, we don't see the things around us anymore, but we see what God wants to do through and in us. And what I want to share with you tonight, you know, aside from me sharing my story and sharing the ministry is that God has something in store in each of us because most of the ministries that we have and that we are involved in in our lives is more of an inward journey. So tonight, I want to share with you what the inward journey of my heart looks like, you know, in responding to the call of God to be going back to the Philippines, to be going back in Manila and live in that place where there's so much poverty, where there's prostitution, where there's drug trafficking, and how you know, God is not just changing other people, but actually in the process, He's changing me. Because the reason why God has called us to Himself is for us to become more and more Christ-like in the way that we look at others. So I think wherever you are right now, whether you're sponsoring a child, whether you are here serving in your church, is more of you becoming more like Christ in the process. And that's what the world needs to see in us as Christians, right? So I want to share uh, my story, my journey on how I, you know, how I end up this doing this. I grew up in one of the slums in Metro Manila, and you know, as Caitlin said, I live with 17 of our other relatives in a small shanty because both of my parents during that time doesn't have a job, so we have to live with my grandma, and you know, when you live with your grandparents, of course, you you need to in the Philippines, extended family, that's what we call ourselves, you know, coming together in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in that house. And um, we, we don't have food of our own, you know, we share, and I remember I have to share one egg with my brothers, two of my brothers, and my mom and my dad. And then, 
You know, what's worse, I think, for the children living there is not just the physical poverty, but most is the spiritual and the emotional poverty. And I remember growing up, my dad became a drug addict because, you know, the community where we live, there's so much drug addiction there. And people tell me, Michelle, you look like your dad. You will become nothing but a thief and a drug addict when you grow up. And it's hard for me to believe the goodness of God. Yeah. And God is my father. If I experience things like that around me, right? And I'm sure it might be different for you, might be different, you know, in, in the area where you live right now, you know, you're experiencing so much in your life. But but I know that, that at one point or another, God will not waste those things in your life. God will not waste your sufferings. Because sometimes the most painful things in our lives, God used them for his glory. So those things are not for nothing. And I think if I did not become a child, sponsored by compassion i will not be here serving this women in that community god used that and allow me to experience it even if it's painful even if it's hard but god allow that so that i can reach out to them and know exactly what they feel and again it's us becoming more and more like christ becoming the person that god wants us to be and so tonight i have my compassion sponsors here they are the ones who you know allowed me to to be doing this you know, they are my inspiration, and I'm sure that if you are sponsoring a child here, you know, sometimes you think that, am I really making an impact? Am I really making a difference in the life of, of that child? I remember uh, my compassion sponsor, when they first met me, they said, I'm not sure if this is the right words, like, oh, Michelle, you're real. <laughs> you're real. And I said, yes, apparently I am. <laughs> But they have been so instrumental in me becoming the man, the, the woman that God wants me to be. <laughs> she's, she's laughing. <laughs> Maybe they saw a little boy and said it. <laughs> but I need to end soon. Um, oh, yeah, and so I think that's the point of our life. It's really following the footsteps of Christ and going to the places where sometimes we don't like. But along the way, you know, God is transforming us deeply in us. And he wants to invite each one of us tonight to get into that adventure in whatever that looks like for you. Sponsoring a child, supporting a missionary, or, you know, uh, coming along, alongside us in made it home. We want for you, you know, to experience the same thing. I think most Christians in the world or you know in this part of the world are you know trying to do and let's let's do this together and win the battle that there is hope and there is a future for the world and for the people around us. I want to leave you with one of my favorite verse. If you will see some of the things that we have for made in hope. The scripture on Jeremiah twenty nine eleven it in inscripted there. It says there, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope in the future. And that is the life that we are about to live if we are in Christ. And I'm sure all of you who have a relationship with Christ is living that kind of life. So let's, you know, penetrate the world with that love. And let's, you know, allow God to work in us and through us to give a hope in the future for the world around. Maraming salamat po. Let's thank you. My husband and I have had five compassion kids. Uh, and I often wish I could go see them, but they're always so far away. We have one in Indonesia, one in Africa, and one in South, uh, two in South America, and one we have now is Nicaragua. Um, it's just so cool. You guys got to meet your, your daughter and daughter over there so praise God I'm Amy Peters I'm the assistant pastor here at Hope Community oh, at Hope Community Church <laughs> oh my goodness I'm the assistant pastor here at Atonement Church with the best lead pastor ever Pastor John Hornberger and I'm not way 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 cool and um, I'm also the campus pastor over at Hope Community Church at the Wilmington Montessori School so um, 
I know I answered the call to be a pastor, and every one of us has a call in our life to do something, and actually April 4th is Compassion Sunday, so if you Google that, you can get some of these dear little beautiful young people that need sponsors into your church, and even if one child was taken, it was worth the effort, so I encourage you to, to check that out as well, and Caitlin Jane has just told me, um, Michelle, that the offering today is going to go to uh, your ministries. So um, I would like you all to just uh, keep that in mind as you bless uh, the offering basket that's going to be passed around at this time. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are amazing and super awesome. You are incredible. We just can't even begin to understand the love that you have for every, each and every person that's ever been created, man, woman, and child. And God, we know that you are the Father to us all, Lord God, and we just pray in the precious name of Jesus that tonight that you would multiply this offering, Lord God, that it would help to set the captives free, that it would let people have an identity and let them have a purpose in Jesus Christ, Lord, and a meaningful life, Lord, that they know that they can grow old and have an abundant life walking with Jesus Christ, and that their spiritual life, their emotional life, their whole person will just be transformed because of the amazing love of God through the Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we do pray over all of these, these people around the world that are just being used, Father God, and just being abused. And, Father God, we just lift up uh, the, um, the mighty name of Jesus as we ask for churches and people and individuals to just care about what is going on around our world, Lord God, especially over in the... Uh, the eastern part of the world where so much of this is going on, Lord God. So, Father, we just pray for a miracle that the Christian community can truly make a difference for the least of these who, who truly have no identity because it has been taken from them, Lord. So, Father, thank you for Michelle's ministry. I just pray for the strength of 10,000 angels to just be around her and equip her and protect her for she truly is in the spiritual battle for the very souls of people. <coughs> Lord God, receive this offering to your glory. Receive this music to your glory. Receive our hearts, O oh God, and our hands and our mouths and all that we are to your glory, O oh God, that we can make a difference and make this world a better place for us, the kingdom of God here on earth. And we pray all of this in King Jesus' name and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 